Hey guys, today for me is pajama day because I have not had one in quite a long time. And if you've been around for a while, you'll know that every once in a while, usually it was about once a week, I would pick a day and I would just not even get out of my pajamas all day. And yes, I'm wearing wintertime pajamas because Jeff keeps the room, our bedroom, like a meat locker and it's cold. I probably um, will change the shirt before the day's over into like a t-shirt or something because, you know, as the day gets longer or lo <laughs> the longer the day goes, the warmer it gets. But I wanted to talk to y'all about some things um, before I get started with the Q&A uh, about the mobile home and land and all that. Okay, one of them is our coffee. Y'all know I've been showing y'all how to clean your Keurig for a little bit. For a little while, I've shown. Becky taught me something that I did not know, and I was super grossed out. Because there was a part that you could take apart that I thought was getting cleaned. It wasn't. I'll show y'all next week what to do. Mine is now, thankfully, clean and not disgusting. And I swear my <laughs> coffee tastes different today. <laughs> This is the first time I've used it since I cleaned it properly. I was so ashamed and disgusted. I wanted to throw the Keurig in the trash. That is how bad it made me feel. I told Jeff, I said, this is gross. This is disgusting. I don't ever want to use it again. He's like, you can just clean it. <laughs> You've cleaned things before, you know, but... He said, it's just coffee. I said, no, it's not. <laughs> it's coffee and dust, possibly mold and mildew. <sighs> I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. And now, I kind of don't even want to use a Keurig anymore. I just want to use my French press. And I have been contemplating that. And I need to teach my sister, because she has a Keurig and she drinks coffee every day. And her husband drinks coffee every day. And her granddaughters drink coffee every day at her house. Or almost every day at her house I need to make sure she knows this anyway I don't know if any of my other siblings have one or not because I don't think many of them drink coffee but this cup is very clean now the cup of coffee the instant side yeah mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for you guys because I'm telling you you've taught me things things I never even knew I thought I was doing good. But you know, that's what a, a lesson I have been learning. Well, no, it's a lesson I learned a long time ago. But it's a lesson that I feel like we can keep learning. Once you know better, do better is kind of like my motto in life. And I know better on how to clean that now. And so I will do better from now on. Um, and... I didn't know before. I don't even know if I saw that in the book. It doesn't say that on the little bottles of the Keurig cleaner. And it doesn't tell you that there's gross stuff in there. And I wish in a way that I could have shown y'all that. I wish I would have filmed it. But I was just like, what is she talking about? What does she mean? So I went over there and looking at it and I was like, Jeff, can you figure out how to take this off? And of course, he takes out his magic stick. I'll show y'all what a magic stick is. He has another one that's blue. This is one of the tools they use at work. And it's called a magic stick. You look it up um, and it's called a magic stick. It's, there's other words too, but um, they use it in the automotive industry whenever... <laughs> anyway, whenever they are taking things apart and um like the interior whenever they're fixing the headliners and all those types of things um he uses it for tons of stuff and he usually has one in his pocket he has one that is just a half one on a lanyard and he put this on it. it's like a rubber band to help you hold it because it's, it's slick you just saw it fly but um he gave me one because he had so many to use as like to smooth down stickers <laughs> they can be used for that too but anyway he pulled out his magic stick out of his pocket and popped that little thing out 
I'm gonna show y'all what that little thing is. I, I gotta show you because now I've talked about it a lot and I'm just running my mouth. Um, I wanna show you because this is so important and I did not know it. Um, now I did just have coffee and I don't usually touch these once they have, until they've cooled down, which this one should have cooled down enough. This little part right here, this one, this, can you show up please? I don't know if you can see it. Hold on, let me turn the camera around. I've got you on a little tripod. This little piece, there's like a little, can you focus? Can you please, I need you to. There's a little thing here and a little thing here. You push those in, you can do it with a screwdriver or something, and this whole little piece pops out. See, it's, it wiggles. That whole little piece pops out. So you can really clean in there and clean in this area. Now, this area wasn't terrible. It was this. What your water and coffee goes, what this sits in and your coffee goes through. I mean, ew. Anyway, it's clean now. I don't feel disgusted. Um, let me get the camera lens back up. Or not lens. That's not the lens. That's the viewfinder. I was so disgusted though. So grossed out. And I will show you how to do it the next time I clean it, which will be next week. I clean my Keurig again with the day I clean my washers and all that stuff. I'm sorry for not teaching y'all the proper way to do that if you didn't know about that. Or, I mean, I'm not trying to teach y'all how to do stuff. I'm just showing you how I do stuff. Now I'm doing it differently. I'm pulling out a magic stick. I'm probably going to use a screwdriver. That did uh, seem to be an easier thing to me. But anyway, I just want to let y'all know that. Don't drink dirty coffee. Ugh. No. Gross. Grody to the max. You know how they said all that. You know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, whenever you're in junior high and you and your friends say all kind of crazy things and, you know, you try to be like the ones on TV? Yeah. We were, I was in that group. I don't know if y'all were. Anyway, Q&A for the mobile home. I asked you that, guys um, to, um, Give me some questions that you had because some of you probably have questions that I have not answered or I have answered in another video. You just haven't seen it because some of you are fairly new. I moved this and I don't even know. Um, and so I want to answer those questions and I am going to be looking down at my phone because that's where the questions are on the community tab and if you have further questions you can just you know email me or put them on a video and I'll do my best to answer I do find that when I'm talking to you I can answer things better I think it's about time to go change to a t-shirt let me go do that before I get started I'm sorry okay I just threw it over my head I didn't even try to brush my hair out again, but it's okay. My hair is wild. Y'all know that. It just does what it wants, and I don't care. I'm just going to let it be that. I'm going to be that lady that, that just, just goes wild. <laughs> Not really, but I'm just going to let it be what it wants to be. Um, also, did want to tell you a little bit of an update about my knee. Still don't know what's going on. It feels like it did back when I injured it. And I had, I had gone to an orthopedic surgeon. I had done all these special things. I had MRIs and all this stuff. And I was told at that time that I would have flares. Well, I haven't had a flare in a long time, so I kind of forgot about it until I had one. But um, it feels exactly like that. And uh, most of the time it's okay if I am... If I'm sitting or laying down, it's whenever I'm walking at first. Like when I first get up. Or if I'm sitting the wrong way for a long period of time. I don't really know how to even explain it. Like I can walk around my kitchen and do my things. And I can do things, you know. I can walk around my house and do things. But it's weird. Let's just say it's weird. I don't know how to explain it. And it's, it's in one location just like it was before. Okay, so questions about the mobile home and the land. That is where we're going. Okay, and I will say who 
said the who asked the questions now um some of you it might be your screen name well that's not gonna work i'm gonna have to hold it um i was gonna try to sit it up with my little doodad but that's not gonna work oh now it's sitting okay so i don't have a lot of questions but let's go ahead and go with it and if i say your name wrong i'm sorry Tamala Rainey 8165 said, how long is it going to be before you move to the mobile home, move the mobile home to your property? Okay, so we don't really know exactly how long it will be. We think it will be between one and two years after we move to the mobile home. And the reason why we're waiting is because we want to sell this house and we don't know how long it's going to take to sell it. But we have to sell this house before we can do anything to the land unless we want to go into debt. And that's one of the things we're trying not to do is to have more debt, actually to get debt free. Because once we sell this house, we'll have no more debt. We don't have any debt on our automobiles. We don't have any debt on anything except this house. So, um we're just trying to not go into debt now if we see that it's taking longer than what we want for this house to sell we will go borrow the money oh, my ears doing the thing where it squeals and almost like you can't hear i have tinnitus okay anyways um the property that we bought it's five and a half acres of cornfield and a little bit of wooded area there was there's nothing been there ever there's never been a home there or anything so we have to get septic we have to get water and we have two choices we can either have public water from rural um you know like city water pretty much is what you call it but um which is what we have at the mobile home right now we could have that or we could have a well dug they're both about the same amount of money but we're trying to decide which one we want to do. I really want to get a well, but it's more upkeep for us because, you know, we'll have to, if something happens to the well, we'll have to, the pump or anything, we'll have to pay for that. We have to do more protective things for the pump and all that. So we're deciding on which one we want to do, if we want to get public water or if we want to get a well dug because they're almost the same exact amount of money. We also have to get power out there. There's no power, um, which it should not be hard because there are power lines down the road. We have to get um, grass because right now, if you drive across that, you could get stuck because it's just been farmland. And um, which right beside it, all around it, is still cornfields. <laughs> and we don't mind. Um, I think they've had peanuts out there too before but it's just fields that's all it is so um the guy that sold it to us was renting the property he does not farm himself he was renting the property to farmers so um we purchased that part i feel like i have a little frog in my throat <laughs> um so we really don't know but we want we we're hoping for within a couple of years that's our goal because we have to get, like septic and all that stuff it's going to be thousands of dollars so we have gone through a lot of our savings and we don't have enough to do that but um i will talk a little bit more about that other because there's, I don't think there's a question about that. But I will talk a little bit about that later on. I hope. I hope I don't remember. Alright. So I got to get this a little bit bigger. Alright. So Donna, Java First. That's her screen name. But her name is Donna. <laughs> um, it says, besides packing and unpacking and getting things the way you want them. When you unpack them, what do you have to do in regard to the mobile home after you moved? Um, for example, painting doors on the cabinets. And that sort of thing when you do get your land ready to move on to what things okay so let me go ahead and talk about what we have to do to the mobile home we are not going to be finishing all of the molding before we move in so we'll have to do like door frame molding 
um there's a little bit of bathroom molding we will do need to do now all of the molding that will have furniture in front of it that will be done like all of the pantry molding all of the bedroom moldings all three bedrooms and all of the living room and kitchen all of that will be done but mostly other than the doors um so all of that I said all that just to say we've got door molding and a little bit of bathroom molding that we'll have to finish. Unless we get to the bathroom molding, like, um, in Noah's bathroom, there's just one piece needs to be done uh, in the floor. And then there's some around the bathroom sink and stuff. If we get to that before we move, if we have enough time before we move, um, we'll do it, which we have time. But what I'm saying is if there's a day we go down there and it's not too late but we don't really have much else to do we'll go ahead and do that because we should have everything to do that with as far as I know all right and we have to do like Noah's bathroom cabinet has a door so it does not have to be done it's fine but our bathroom cabinet has no doors so we need to do the doors on it we need to do all of the doors in the kitchen cabinets up top now there's one part one section right above the sink that has never had doors and we probably are not going to put those doors put any doors in those two spots because i kind of like the idea of those two places being open but the middle one will have doors like it used to um we need to put the doors on what we're calling the tower <laughs> and um also on the opposite side where we put the access uh under the bar we got to put a door there and we got to put doors on the bottom of the tower uh i don't think there's any more doors we have to do other than painting the front and back door we are not painting any of the interior doors we decided we're just going to leave them the color they are if we ever decide we want to paint them it's not that big of a deal it's not that hard but they are made with this like um they're just hollow core doors and they have this vinyl covering over them it seems like so that's why we decided not to worry about painting them which i know you can i know you can but you know they all look good so we just are not worried about that all right so let's see the doors the trim we do have to do a lot of touch up there's some spots that for whatever reason it got bumped something you know maybe splattered some paint or something we do have to do some touch up but most likely i mean it's not a lot it's just a little bit in a few places there's a place in noah's room where they were putting on the middle trim that they bumped it with a screw or something and it's gonna have to be fixed just where we have put in molding and trim in some places that's got to be there there was a little bump or something or uh whenever we were drilling the screw in it kind of this it moved the wrong way and we might have hit it or something but nothing major i can go through with a little brush and um fix those little paint mistakes and it's not a big deal now where we put the molding in noah's bedroom and in the kitchen living room and hallway there's going to be some stain that has to be touched up we already knew that because like the cut edge is not stained so we're gonna have to stain those cut edges and that's not a big deal that would take maybe an hour to do the whole entire living room kitchen and hallway and Noah is gonna do his however he wants but it won't take long um, I can't think of anything else that we need to do after other than that if i do think of something i'll let you know in another video but i don't think that there's going to be much else actually i think let me see if i wrote it down in my book i'll be right back okay so i have this book that i've had since well i had the book for a very long time but i've been using it for um everything to do with the mobile home everything so uh let me see i think oh 
uh, things that can wait until we move. I just wrote down cabinet doors, crown molding in some places. <laughs> That's all I wrote down. But it's not even the crown molding um, that we're going to have to wait on because we've already done it. So that doesn't even matter. I just wasted your time and mine. All right. So let's see. What else did she say? What sort of thing do you when you do get your land ready to move onto what things will you be doing after the mobile home is moved to your land when it's ready for example painting the outside or doing outside things you're just not doing now because it's not the your land it's not moved where its final place will be okay what we're doing to the outside after we move it to our land um one we're gonna have a 10 top roof built um it's going to go over the whole entire mobile home but it's going to come out in the front and back as well to be a roof to a porch all the way across now i don't know if we're going to put a porch all the way across because we have talked about a porch on part of it and then like a carport area too because is there a way i can show you I don't know of a way to show you. If I had a picture, um, I could show you. Okay, I'm finding nothing that shows the way that Jeff explained it. Nothing at all. And um, so, I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> Other than it's going to go over the whole entire roof of the mobile it's going to go over the whole mobile home and come out on both sides i don't know how far and it's going to be held up with like four by fours or something like that or maybe bigger than that i'm not sure jeff this is jeff's baby <laughs> so um it's just going to go all the way across and we're going to have like a big front porch all the way in the front and then the back possibly like a carport and a porch all the way the rest of it most likely that's what's going to happen with the outside and that will be done before anything else is done to the mobile home um on the outside because that is a priority for us is to get like the roof that's on it is good it's not leaking there's no problems with it but that type of roof they're known to start leaking they're known to have problems so we're just going to go ahead and get that tin top roof on there. That's the plan anyway. And on the outside, we plan to, um, po well, we possibly plan on changing all of the windows out to, a, now there are storm windows in there, but we possibly um, later on down the road thinking about swapping them to a better grade of storm window, a more insulated storm window. We're not sure yet. We have not decided for sure, but we're thinking about that. Um, so windows are a possibility, and also the outside of it, uh, where the tin is. We're going to leave it as is, but we are um, going to put, I can't think of what they're called, but it's like strips of wood on the outside put insulation on and then have like a wood cladding or whatever it's called on the outside of it and i don't know if we're going to stain it or paint it or how we're going to do it yet i would like to keep it the wood grain color so or the wood color so most likely and this is what jeff likes too like the old weathered wood look um we could do that and that is the plan and then some sort of more permanent skirting that um it'll have like it's still going to be a mobile home but it's going to be upgraded <laughs> I guess. we just want it to have better insulation and stuff um so let's see what else uh to the mobile home i think that's all for the mobile home after we move as far as i know for the outside of it porches a be well better roof porches possible carport um better insulation possible new windows and because the windows in it are good they're really good windows but um that's a possibility so and i mean i really don't want to change a lot like we're not gonna i don't think 
will we ever need more space on the inside I, that's just not a thing we need we were trying to downsize so I don't want more inside space I don't want an extra room built on or anything like that we just I don't think we need it I, I want a smaller space to clean <laughs> and that's what I'm getting when I get this mobile home uh, one of the things anyway uh, I, you didn't ask this but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you Jeff and Noah have this dream of a shop and they're planning on doing that so I'm not exactly sure how, but that will be another thing on the land the later on down the road, we hope. Okay, so the next part, uh, let's see. Deborah Lawler asks, tell us the story of the land, or says, <laughs> she's just not asking, but she is, but she's not. Anyways, tell us the story of the land. I think it will be good to start from the beginning. Okay, from the beginning. <laughs> the beginning starts back almost 12 years ago whenever we bought this house. We knew whenever we bought this house, this was not our forever home. There were times where we thought, oh, well, we could live here forever. It's nice. It's, there's, you know, they always said that this place had a lot of crime and stuff, but it, it doesn't. It's nice. It's, this is a nice place. We don't have, oh, I'm kicking things. We don't have any problems here. The neighborhood's great. Everybody's nice. You know, it was all good. But about four years ago, things changed. Um, there started to be a very big uptick in crime. I think that's the proper word. Anyway, a lot more crazy folks shooting each other is one of the things. Um, taxes started getting a lot higher. Uh, it just became a place we didn't really want to live, but we weren't really wanting to move yet. So we were kind of, sort of, just looking in different places we looked like anywhere that was about an hour 30 minutes to an hour from jeff's job we started looking um we looked at land we looked at homes and we actually went and toured places we looked at places not with a realtor but um different ways we did look because jeff has friends that have property and stuff um we just started looking just kind of as a date night we just go riding the country because we knew we were not city folk we knew we did not belong in the city but there was a part of us that kind of was like oh it's comfortable here it's really close to everything close to the doctors close to the stores close to everything we thought at one point we were going to live in this house forever for a very very short amount of time we thought that well we started looking and then about two years ago, we got really serious about looking because the crime just kept getting worse and worse and worse here. Not just the crime, but also taxes started getting a lot higher and it just didn't feel like this is where we needed to be. So we started looking really like trying hard to find something. and nowadays it's very hard to find anything that and we had certain criteria we wanted at least three acres we didn't care if there was a home on it or not but we wanted at least three acres and we wanted it to be close enough to town that we wouldn't have to drive far to go get groceries but far enough out that we were in the country again because we don't belong in the city we want chickens and goats and, and all the things, which we have chickens and rabbits, but we want, I want goats. We want to have things that you can't really have here. We want a big garden. Well, yes, we've had a garden here every year, except this one, which really feels weird. But we've had a garden here, but it's just not being something that would feed our family. And the only way we could actually do that is to cut all the trees in our yard and cut all the neighbor's trees too because there's too much shade. Y'all, I know in Alabama, there's never anybody that says there's too much shade, but if you want a garden, there's too much shade. <laughs> so, um, I mean, there's huge, beautiful trees here and the trees are beautiful and I love them, but they're not, for gar they're not garden friendly. So anyway, we want a lot of things that we couldn't have here, so we decided to just amp up our looking. So we started looking, and then we started enlisting other people. 
Um, well, first of all, we expanded our 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 area to. I know. Okay. We did not want to live where we used to live before we moved here, because. And I know I have family that watches these videos, but I don't like that place. I never have, even as a child. And I don't want to live there. I remember as a child that I was happier at my daddy's place. And it's the same county. I was happier living, I mean, you know, visiting my daddy and living with my daddy than I was where we lived before we moved here. I don't know why, but I've just never liked it there. It's just been a thing. Anyway. We didn't want to move back there, but there was nothing. We did look close to there, and we did actually even look in that county, but there was nothing, okay? So, we started asking different people, different family members. I asked some of my sisters that live in the same county um, where we're moving to, where we bought property. I asked some of my sisters. We asked Jeff's sisters and his mama and all of that. So, we just started asking friends and family that lived in different places so a little bit further on closer to the time we purchased Jeff's dad had more health problems my mama was diagnosed with Sjogren's and um, you can just see that they're not as well as they were now do these uh, do our parents have other children? Yes. But we want to be able to be there to help if we can. If that makes sense. I know we're only an hour away from them. But an hour could be a lot. When it comes to a health crisis. Or a medical emergency. Ten minutes could be a lot. But still. Um, so we really started looking in the area that we are going to. Um, we looked 45 minutes from that spot because it was still about 30 minutes from Jeff's job. We looked um, lots of different areas around there. Not just where we're moving to, but it just happened that we did move there. Well, anyways, my sister-in-law, who my son calls the mob boss and who people call her husband the mayor, because they know everybody and no she's not a mob boss she's not a bad person she just has everybody's phone numbers everybody she knows everybody and I can tell you why she knows everybody one her husband's a fire chief two they have a cattle business they they have a farm so of course they know everybody because this is farm la farmland you know but it's funny because he calls her auntie mob boss <laughs> it's just funny to me um and he gave her that nickname Anyway, we asked her, well, she had wanted us back there for years, like for 20 some years, because it's been over 20 years since we lived there. Um, she has wanted us back there for like 20 something years. So she went to work. She started calling everybody. She started going to see everybody. She was doing all the things. We were having lunch all the time and going to, you know, talking about things. She was sending me links to places. And um, there's a guy that they, uh, they hunt on his land, which is the guy we bought the land from, him and his wife. Well, she asked him, she said, you got a lot of land over there. You want, you mind selling a few acres? He said, well, I don't know. Let me talk to my wife. And I thought, no, he's never going to sell that. He He's not going to sell it because he's going to give it to his kids. Lo and behold, he calls back a week later, and we are five and a half acre home uh, or land owners. So pretty much our my sister-in-law, Jeff's baby sister, um, whose land we are moving to right now, that's where our mobile home is, uh, she found the land for us with her connections because of farming and hunting and they also own a deer processing business which they I think closed that I don't think they're gonna do that anymore and that's another reason why they know everybody they're not bad people at all they're not there's not an evil bone in their bodies so but it's just funny that he called her that but anyway I don't know 
if that answered your question, Deborah, but I hope so. <laughs> it was a long way to do it, wasn't it? But friends and family helped us find it. And that's how we found it. And so far, the only thing we've done to it is bush hog it. And um, actually, Stanley did that. Uh, my sister-in-law's husband. And we cleared the driveway area that we have not even built the driveway. It's still like, bloop, you, you fall off of it. It's not ready. You cannot take a vehicle down it. Even though Stanley did, he did not expect it to be that steep. But he was on an ATV and he was fine. There was no problems. He had a little fun ride though. He said his old bones didn't know if they could take it anymore. <laughs> I think that's what he said about that. I don't know. He was talking about something. He said a lot of things like that, though, so I don't know. Anyways, let's go ahead. Um, Karen said, Will you have any pack or unpack with me for the kitchen area and pantry? I do plan on packing with you guys. It's probably going to be with music because I don't want to talk through the whole thing. But yes, most likely I will be packing. But, I am considering, I have not got the go-ahead with Jeff yet. I'm considering going ahead and taking everything that's non-essential right now. Like, all of our things that I don't have to have on a day-to-day -day basis. But, I do use often. Like, if I use it in six months, I'm going to keep it. If that's the way I'm doing it. Um, I am thinking about taking some of that stuff on down there and putting it in the cabinets down there. So, I do plan on doing that, and I do plan on, I guess, packing the pantry with you guys. I don't know. Uh, the pantry is mostly food. There are some, like, uh, what do you call those? Kitchen utensils. <laughs> That's not what it's called. Small appliances. They're on the top shelf, uh, and... I think that's pretty much it that's in there. There might be some mason jars, but I'm not sure. And then in the drawer down there, there's some like um, extra napkins and tablecloths and things like that. So, I don't know. We're probably going to be doing that. All right. So, Kathy Newton said, are you going to fence an area for the puppies? Absolutely. We already have the fencing that we bought from Bucks and the posts we bought from Bucks. I cannot let my babies get hurt. And there are big, big animals out there that they are not familiar with. Um, the most animals they've been around their whole lives are other dogs, cats, a possum or two, and... Um, I guess rats out there in the yard or something. I don't know. They they they're not um, they're not used to big cows and stuff. And so yes, we will have a fenced-in area for them. And yes, we will be most likely um, toting them to that area every time they have to go out because I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet. I don't know if we're going to like fence in a spot at the front door and then have like a gate to come in the front door. I don't really know. I would like to do that. To have it where they can just go in and out the front door and not have to worry about um, toting them out there. But we'll see. But yes, our babies are going to have a safe place because I don't want anything to happen to them. They're all older. They're all elderly dogs. And one of them is, she seems to be deaf at times, but other times she does not. I think she has selective hearing sometimes. I don't know. But she seems to be a little deaf. Seriously, she does. And then one is blind in one eye, and she has um, just mobility problems with that. Like, she sometimes runs into things. I think it's fixing the rain. Um, and my camera just went off. But there's nobody out there. But anyways. Um, yeah. We're going to have a fenced in area for our girls. There's no way I wouldn't. And uh, I have had people ask me. Well why, what about an invisible fence? Um, I do know people that have invisible fences. They are really good tools. In fact my sister-in-law and her husband have that. For the, her dog, their dogs. And they don't even have the collars on their dogs anymore. Because their dogs learn very quickly not to go certain places. Um, but our girls are all too small. You can't 
do that with them. They're too little. So, I just wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, let's see. The next one, I hope that answered. Uh, Dana Kapahu. I, I, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Kapahu? I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. Maybe I said it right. I don't know. Can you tell us the beginning, beginning of a story? I think I did. Um, we just, we never planned to live here forever. Even though we love this house. If I could pick up this house and put it on my land, I would. Um, the only, uh, I would make some modifications to it. But, not to this room. But, <laughs> but, um, we never planned to be here forever. And I think I did answer that whenever I answered about this, the land. I hope I did. If I didn't, please tell me, Dana, and I will try again. Okay, Alyssa Sing Sing 4039. Are you nervous to move into the mobile home or are you excited? Okay, I'm going to answer. She's got a couple questions. So, no, I'm not nervous. I grew up in a mobile home. I lived in a mobile home. The majority of my life, there were times when I lived with my daddy that I didn't live in a mobile home, but most of the time when I lived with him, I did. And then there were times when I lived with my mama that we didn't live in a mobile home, but most of the time we did. Um, the first two houses that Jeff and I had were homes, like brick and mortar. Well, yeah, that kind of type, like not this, but kind of um, old farmhouses. That's what they were. Where we lived before we lived here was a mobile home, and then we moved into this brick house. I, mobile homes don't scare me. They don't bother me. I'm fine with them. I, I'm not scared of it at all. I'm not nervous about it at all. Um, it doesn't bother me. And I hope that's explained what, what you were asking. I'm not sure. Am I excited about it? Absolutely, because I will be out of the city. And the home will be smaller and it will be easier for me to maintain because I know that, okay, that's a three bedroom, two bath, a living room, kitchen all together and a little bitty pantry. I should say it's a closet. <laughs> okay, that's what we're going to be moving into. Right now we have a four bedroom, two bath, living room, kitchen, dining room, pantry, uh, and then another that used to be the old living room before they ad added the addition. A lot more house is here. And I don't, we just don't need all of this house. We don't. And especially whenever Noah moves out. Um, <laughs> it's going to be way too much for two old folks. I'm sorry, it just will be. <laughs> We're not old yet. But one day we will be. And this house is just too much. It's too big. Also, I like the idea of me being able to reach into the kitchen cabinets without having to have a stool. I mean, I know I will be having to with certain things, certain areas, but here I have to have a stool to get into. Like the top of the pantry and stuff, I won't have to deal with that very much. But I'm not nervous at all. I'm very excited about it. Yes, I'm excited. Uh, do you plan to have a garden at the mobile home after you move in? I don't know if we'll have a garden immediately after, but we do plan on having one next year if we're still in the same spot. If we're not in the same spot, yes, I plan on having one in on our land. We have always had a garden up until this year. Uh, this is the first year for us not having a garden, and I miss not having those fresh pro uh, vegetables, the produce that come out of our garden, but... We've been so busy, the garden would have been neglected, so I'm okay with that. Um, so, yes, we are going to have a garden. Maybe not immediately, but next spring. By the way, really love how it's coming along. Thank you for keeping us updated. You're welcome. I hope that y'all are enjoying those videos. All right. So, Carol, I don't want to say your name wrong. Leu, I don't know how to say it. Did you move the home to the property you're on now or was the home there when your sister in law on your sister in law's land? We moved it there. Actually I have a video of us moving it and there was one spot where I abruptly stopped the video because it fell off into a ditch. It was a very exciting time. It was a very scary time. <laughs> and um yeah, we moved it with a tractor. <laughs> and 
the um which we moved our other mobile home before that we had a long time ago with a tractor too but yeah we moved it there it was on a dirt road the next dirt road over it actually belonged to my brother-in-law stanley's uncle who is very close in age he was i think the baby of the family and um stanley's mother is one of the older children and she had already gotten married and started having children and her mother was still having children so they are not very far at, off in age uh jeff and ricky are very close in age they work together they've been very good friends for a long long time and they had bought the mobile home they got married a year after us i want to yeah they did because they got married in 97 we got married in 96 and um then Noah and Andrew, I want to say is his name, their firstborn, their son, they're almost the same age. He was born a month after Noah, and I remember her coming to see me. Donna is his wife's name. I remember her coming to see me whenever I had had Noah, and she was, like, pregnant with him. And um, I want to say his name is Andrew. I could be wrong. Adam! His name is Adam. Why do I think Andrew? Adam is his name. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Anyways, uh, I remember her coming. I said, well, it won't be long now and you'll have yours in your arms. And she just, you know, she came to see me after I had my baby. And then she had hers. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was on a dirt road, right? Like I can see the dirt road from the back door of the mobile home. I can see the houses that are over there. I can see the spot it was in. <laughs> Which, in the, in the winter time, you can. But, yeah. We moved it. That was a long way around that, wasn't it? My phone, my camera, whatever this thing is I'm recording on. It's not my phone. It's right here. My camera is about to quit again. Because it quits in like 20-something minutes. So, I want to go ahead and start it over. And I'll be right back. Okay, so there's only a couple more questions left, and, oh, there's only one more question left, um, because Sarah didn't ask a question, she just said that, uh, she just wanted to say we was doing a good job, so, uh, Denise Prater said, are you excited about moving or dreading it? We're very excited, we're dreading the actual moving part, because it's a lot of work, and, um, figuring out what we want to keep and what we want to get rid of, because we know we are going to have to get rid of things and we know there's a lot of things in this house that we don't even want we don't even like anymore it's not our style anymore it's not something we use but we just haven't gotten rid of it even though we have been purging for quite a while which i have not been doing as much um there's things we know we want to get rid of so that part is exciting knowing that we're going to be getting rid of them quickly and um all of that but it's a lot of work to pack up a house and I don't want to have to do that part. But you know, whenever you're doing all those things and you're helping yourself, it's a great excitement, I feel like. And I feel like that um, it's an ex Noah's already packed up a lot. Maybe I'll get him to pack up some of my stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we are excited about it. But... I am sort of dreading the move, the actual packing aspect because I don't like to do that, <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I know you said y'all knew that wasn't y'all's forever house, but you've lived there for a while, I assume. Yeah, we've lived there almost 12 years. So I know people collect and accumulate stuff over the years. Does it seem overwhelming or have you had time to think about it yet? I have had time to think about it. It is a bit overwhelming in some areas because there are some things that I do not want to get rid of. Like most of the things in my kitchen, I have over the times... Over the years, I have collected things that helped me in the kitchen, and I don't want to get rid of things that I enjoy using, and I will not get rid of those things. I don't care if I have to put them under a bed. I won't have to do that. But no, um, there are tools over time that have helped me and stuff. I don't 
even though I love organization, I love having things organized, I'm not looking forward to figuring out how I'm going to do the things in the mobile home. And I think the reason why is because it is new, but I mean, it's, it's so weird. It's like I'm looking forward to getting it organized, but I'm not looking forward to actually doing it because I want for it all to be done in a sensible way at the beginning. But I also have to accept that that's not going to be how it's going to be. I know that you have to rearrange things and move things around for them to actually, for you to find what works for you. And this is a new house and I know that Jeff built the cabinet to my specifications. I'm still wondering if I maybe should have told him to do it differently like had more drawers or less drawers <laughs> i don't know it's still a little bit um on the it's a, a mix of excitement and overwhelm at the same time but i think the excitement outweighs the overwhelm by 80 <laughs> percent <laughs> it's like 20% overwhelm, maybe. So, you know, the 80-20 lifestyle, we can do it. But, <laughs> I don't know. It, and I know that, like, for my clothes, I've downsized a lot. But I have noticed that I have bought some new things recently. And I have not done the things I was supposed to do by getting rid of things. Which is what I normally would be doing. I have not done that. But, I bought some shorts and tank tops because, y'all, it's hot. It's so hot and I had not let myself wear shorts and tank tops for years because of my size and I'm like why why do I do this to myself why be hot in jeans when my legs are fine you know it's not like I'm wearing booty shorts and showing my behind or something you know I wouldn't do that anyway um, so I didn't follow my own rules recently and like shoes I, I'm good with that because I don't have as many I used to have like 60 pair of shoes Jeff has more shoes than me now I don't have that many um I just I don't know I don't have a lot of stuff that I feel like I couldn't get rid of like yeah I have tons of books but a lot of those I can let go of it's okay I did purge a bunch of books last year I think it was like over a thousand books I can get rid of books it's not a big deal um let's see I don't know if there are any more questions I'm gonna refresh it just to see if anybody has asked another one no nobody has asked another one since I did all of this. Um, but yeah. Also, what was it I wanted to talk to y'all about? The other thing. <sighs> there was something I said I would go back to. I'm going to have to go back to the very first clip to figure that out. But I know it was something I wanted to talk about. I should have made myself a note for that one. Because I didn't have a question. It was just something I wanted to talk about. So let me go back to the first clip and let me see if I can figure it out. Okay, so I look back at the clip and if it's what I think it is, I was talking about the money that we've spent so far and I said I hope I don't remember and said I hope I don't forget. Well, I did what I hoped, didn't I? I didn't remember. Um, I think what I was wanting to talk about is the money we have, like, we had saved to do this before like we had been saving money now there are things that we did that we might not have done if Jeff had not gotten extra overtime if he had not gotten bonuses things like that um, or if he had not gotten overtime it wasn't extra overtime it was overtime because you know that's what overtime is is extra but there are some things that we probably would have done differently had it not been for him getting that extra money from working and so our savings at this point 
we still have some savings but we don't want to use it all because I feel like you still need to keep some savings like for emergency fund for like if the washer goes out or dryer goes out or the refrigerator or the stove or the car needs work or anything like that like if it's below a hundred dollars yeah you may not have to have a savings for it but even if it's something that costs a hundred dollars it's not easy like an appliance that's a hundred like if your microwave goes out okay whatever you can live without a microwave for a while until you save that little bit of money but you don't want to live without a refrigerator you don't want to live without a stove you can live without a dishwasher but you don't want to <laughs> i don't want to um but there are some things you can that are luxuries i feel like if if my microwave went out whatever you know kind of thing um at this point if my keurig went out i don't know if i'd care i like the convenience but i don't know if i'd replace it because y'all i was grossed out and yes i'm back on that one but we did have money saved to do these things but we don't have enough to do the land that's what i was trying to get at i believe we don't have enough to do the land nowhere near enough not even enough for the septic tank which is i think the cheapest part well no the electric would probably be the cheapest part but you can't do that until your home is moved to it um as far as i know anyway um but yeah we we just don't have the funds and we don't want to go into debt because that's part of what we're doing here is getting out of debt getting out of the city um and i will tell y'all that my our neighborhood right now is fine um it's a good neighborhood still we have great neighbors nobody is having issues here but this city is just getting worse. This is a college town. There's several colleges here. This is a military town or city. It's the capital of Alabama. And it really feels like if you really, if you lived here and you saw what it looked like three or four years ago compared to what it looks like now, you would be wondering what is happening why does this look like why is it so nasty why is there garbage everywhere why are the roads like the roadsides not cut why is this place so gross but then you look downtown where the capital is and they're doing all this construction and they're doing all this whitewater park and which actually is just a rafting park or something i don't even know what that is we have not looked into it because we have no desire to go there um you look at all that and you think oh well, this is a great place to live but then just go out of it a little bit and you'll find it's not um my camera is battery flashing i'll be right back Okay, so what I'm saying is they're doing all this work downtown, making it look better, having more things for people to come see and do, and more attractions, you know, but the rest of the city's being neglected bad. Like, there's garbage everywhere. It drives me nuts. Like, we have to take two different interstates to go to the land, and I know for a fact that there's a pile of junk it's probably about chest high on me and I'm 5'4 that has been there for like two weeks on the side of the interstate and it's in Montgomery in here I mean y'all know where I live because I used to have P.O. Box um it has not been picked up and used to you go through there and then a few hours later it'd be gone you wouldn't see it again and I know that there's like it's harder to get people to work like it's harder I don't know why that people that, that like there's less employees I don't know why I don't know how people are surviving if they're not working but 
they need to, to focus more on the entire city and not just one area. And that's the way it is right now here. It's been like that for a couple years, about three years. And um, it's not the only reason why we want to leave. It's not the only reason why we're moving. We are moving sooner than we had planned because of the crime and how terrible it's getting into more taxes and all that. But we always planned on moving except that very short time where we were thinking, oh, well, we could live here forever. It'd be fine. Um, it, it's like, this was not the plan to live here forever. We moved here to get closer to doctors, to get closer to Jeff's job. Um, at the time when we, we moved here, I had a ton of health problems. I can't even name all the things. I was taking a handful of pills every single day, like 16 or 18 pills a day, prescriptions. Now I'm down to two, one for my thyroid, one for my blood pressure, and I'm still trying to figure that out, trying to get it, not anymore. Um, I had a lot of issues. I had a lot of health issues that were happening in my, that I didn't know what was going on. And now we know more that it was my thyroid, you know, situation. And, you know, that's better. And Selena had health issues that we needed, felt we needed to get her closer to a doctor and stuff. So, there were reasons we moved here and those reasons are gone now. Like, yeah, Jeff's still working at the same place. He's been working there almost 20 years, but it's getting closer to time that hopefully he won't have to work anymore. Um, and he's okay with driving and he's tired of living in the city. And there's a lot of reasons why we're moving. There's a lot. It's, it's a mountain of reasons. But the main one is so that we can feel safer than what we do now. Because it has gotten to the point, and I know that I went shopping by myself the other day, but my nerves were so bad afterwards that that is one reason why I just did the shopping haul. Because, like, yeah, I know it's hot outside, but it wasn't, like, extreme. Like, I'll put it this way. My nerves were so bad that I was sweating from every single pore of my body. And I wanted to just shower. I wanted to just get that off of me. And I wanted to, I was so exhausted from just going to two stores, which I don't love shopping but I used to enjoy going to shop for things like, I was shopping for our new house. That's supposed to be enjoyable, you know? But I didn't enjoy it, and I regretted going to this town, this city. I wish I would have went to the one next to us. And that's what I started to do, but I didn't do that. But I can't even feel comfortable going to the grocery store alone anymore. So, I need to get out of here, you know? Jeff doesn't feel comfortable shopping here. And he's a grown man who's not scared of anything. But you don't ever know what crazy is going to happen. I mean, just look up Montgomery, Alabama. And you'll find how crazy it is. And our mayor is blaming it on things that has nothing to do. A criminal is a criminal and the criminal ain't going to care about laws. Plain and simple. Criminals don't care about laws. They just don't. Um, our mayor's never even here as far as I know. <laughs> so, he doesn't even know what's going on. His family, I don't even think, are here. They're most of the time off traveling and, you know, going to do this political thing and that political thing. At least that's what I have understood from what I have seen people saying I did have the next door app but y'all 
I got rid of it. I, I deleted my account because I thought the next door app, which I don't know if y'all have it or not, but if you do, let me know how it is around your place. But I thought it was a place where you could go and, you know, get to know your neighbors and maybe find out where the yard sales were and, and do bring community closer. Not here, it's not. They constantly talked about the gunshots and it was it was like a constant every day. I heard gunshots on my street and blah 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 street or this community or that community and it was like constant every day. And if it wasn't that, it was somebody fighting about politics and I'm sorry, I'm not going to fight about politics. That's my own business. It's your own business. You do what you want to do. I'm gonna do what I want to do. We ain't gonna fight about it. I don't. I, I never even said anything on there, hardly at all, unless it was like complimenting somebody that they did do something good. <laughs> but I was just like, this is too stressful. I, I'm getting rid of it. So I did because it was constant people fighting and talking about this thing that happened in the city, that thing that happened in the city. And it was bringing anxiety in my life that I didn't want. And yes, I know the things are still happening, but I don't have to know about every single thing that happens in this city. It's a big city. I don't have to know it all. Because I can't. We can't bombard ourselves with all the sadness and expect to ever be happy. Not saying I want to live in a hole and not know about any of it. I don't know. I don't mind knowing about some things. But I was hearing it from the news. Google was warning me about things because they tell me about things in my local area. And I had that. No thanks. I don't need it from every direction. One's enough. Google can tell me. <laughs> Jeff usually tells me if he hears about something because he'll hear about it. But yeah, I got rid of the next door app because of that. But anyway, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. This was the Q&A. If you have any more questions, I will answer if possible. What I will do, if you have any more questions, if any more pop up, I will answer them in some video. I will just say, hey, so-and-so asked me, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll answer if I can. Um, if you do have any more questions and you want me to do another Q&A, like if I did not answer good enough or thoroughly enough or whatever, um, let me know. I will answer in a, in a future video. And what I will try to do is at the beginning of videos, answer the questions and then, you know, have it done that way. So any questions you have about the mobile home or the land, if I did not answer them here, I don't mind if y'all ask me questions. I don't mind if you ask me questions about other things. I may or may not answer all of them because there are some things that I do keep private because one, you gotta have some privacy. Two, somebody else in the family, it might have something to do with them and I may not want them to, you know, I'm not going to do something against what they want. Um, like, I know I had people asking about my daughter, you know, she's, as far as I know, the last time we talked, she was fine, and we do talk now, it was a lot better than it used to be, not as often as mama would like, um, but I can, I can talk to her anytime, you know, but, and sometimes, things get, um, how do I need to explain this, sometimes people are busy. <laughs> She's never told me she's too busy to talk, though. But I feel like we have a pretty good relationship. I, I do wish she was closer. And I know a lot of you may not even know that we have a daughter. We do. She lives in Pennsylvania. And some of you are closer to her than I am. And that drives me nuts. It really does. For her to be that far away. It drives me nuts every single day of my life. So... Um, I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I feel myself getting too emotional. Uh, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with being emotional, but it's not about that. <laughs> anyway, y'all know I can't stop talking once I start. 
I have to make myself. So I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Like I said, if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments. I do not mind answering. And I, what I will do if I do not, if I'm not able to answer in the comment thoroughly enough, like if you still are confused or you still need more answers, I can answer better by talking than I can by typing, it seems. I don't know. I think it's got something to do with you actually seeing me say it and knowing my voice and like whenever you are talking to someone face to face, it does a lot better than typing because you can tell if the person's happy or sad or whatever. <laughs> You can tell if the person really wants to answer or not, too. So, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Also, let me know how you're doing. I don't um, just say that just because it's something to say. I really do want to know how you are. And if you have a prayer request, you can leave that down below in the comments as well. And remember, don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet.